Okay, there are a couple of notable changes with the latest Hakshi. You might open it up and find that you're getting less flash space than you did in the previous versions. There's a reason for this. The save states for the SNES games using Canoe take up approximately 2 megabytes each. That's a lot of space. So Cluster made it where there's uh, 20 additional megabytes put aside to be able to handle these saves. But he also put in another ability to be able to restore the space in a different way. There's 50 megabytes of unused NAND flash memory and there's an experimental H mod with the new Hashi and ex install extra modules. It's gonna be extra space module and you see my 237.5 megabyte that I have a bit able to be flashed to right now. I'm gonna install this extra space module and we'll see what happens. So obviously when you install cores you want to copy them into your user mods folder then you go into the module tab on Hashi, and once it tells you what to do, you pretty much just have to hold both the power and reset away from you for a few seconds until it resumes the flashing process. So I'm going to do that and install the extra space module right now. Then I'm going to do a little brief update on my uh, cores that I've been putting together for RetroArch as well, and show you what I've done with those. But for right now, we're going to regain some of the space. There are another couple uh, patches that he's done as well. There's a little bit of a uh, power leak issue that made some systems run hot when you're using a custom kernel. He fixed that and uh, systems are running at a decent normal temperature now. So make sure you upgrade to the latest Hashi and 2.21C is working quite well. And I prefer the debug version because I get this little command prompt window that shows me what's going on with every little bit of the process. See, it's telling me how much space I used. I used, you know, I have 242 megabytes for games, save states to use, all that good stuff. But right now I have 263 megabytes to use. The other thing he did that was really interesting is that initially, when you'd uh, go to click the original 21 games, it would literally just knock 82 megabytes off of your flash memory. So I would uh, basically have my 263 get knocked down to like 142, you know, you, you know what I mean, 82 less. But right now, when I click it, it only uses 500 kilobytes of space. The reason why is initially they were overmounted into a different directory on your SNES Classic, and they were replicated, as in copied, so you used them up twice. But what he did is he did a clever thing where he does like desktop shortcuts like this where they don't take up any true space. So you look up the space that these things take up, just a couple kilobytes each, compared to actually copying the files over. So we could have the original 21 games without using any additional memory, and I use the extra save mod here. They use that 50 megabytes of additional unused NAND flash space. So I'm able to flash 263 megabytes here and still have these 21 original games in the process. That's pretty sweet. Now as far as my core updates here, I've merged uh, Cluster's changes along with my changes. So now we officially have a merge set where all the cores run with both the NES Classic as well as the SNES Classic all the way down the line. And I'm going to my modules, and Star Extra modules, and these are all the ones that I put together, and I streamlined these and merged these all together. And every one of these works with both the NES Classic and the SNES Classic, except for two of them, which I'm probably going to clean up out of here. We have the CRT hack, which runs great with the NES Classic. Then we have the RetroArch Extreme NES Classic, which has over 500 filters, and this only runs with the NES Classic as well, so... You pretty much want to ignore these unless you use an NES Classic, but otherwise, every other one of these cores runs perfectly fine with the NES Classic as well as the SNES Classic. And you just have to use uh, Hashi 2.20 or up, and you're fine. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and hope this clarifies a few things for you, and uh, I'll have a link to my core set. Have fun playing around with it. You can play stuff like TurboGrafx CD, Sega CD with better compression, Atari Jaguar, 3DO, and multiple other systems. I mean, Nintendo Game & Watch, Pokemon Mini, Pokemon Mini, 
I mean, there, you'll see quite a few of them through the list there. And you can look in the README to the right of each of them to see what they play. And you can watch my other videos to see some of these cores in action on the NES Classic. And they all transferred quite well to the SNES Classic.